Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the Stokus free VST sequencer plugin in Reaper. Now the Stokus VST plugin is a great free sequencer for both PC or Mac that could be used to inspire parts that we might not think of on our own. At its core, it's a step sequencer, which means it generates MIDI notes. And because of that, it doesn't create any sound of its own, but it can be used to sequence or trigger other VST instrument plugins or synthesizers within Reaper. Although it can be used for basic step sequencing, its main function is to provide or add randomness to the step sequencing process. So let's see how this works in Reaper. We'll first go to their website, which should look like this. Go up here to the download button and click it and choose the version you need, either Windows or Mac. Then we'll install it and open up Reaper. And I've already set up four tracks with four VST instruments on them. This first one has a synth using the Vital VST instrument. <laughs> So we'll use this synth to be triggered by the Stokus plugin. Let's close this. Let's open up the effects. And let's add the Stokus plugin. Right over here, double click it. And we should put it before the synth so it could trigger it. Let's close this. And let's create a two bar loop. And let's open it back up. This is what the Stokus plugin looks like. Over here we have our notes, and over here we have the steps that could trigger the sound. So we just click to enter steps, and they'll play. And we put them on each quarter note. And if we trigger multiple notes on each spot, it's going to randomize which ones are chosen. Let's add a few more notes that aren't necessarily in key. Now, if that's a bit too random, we could choose a key to stay within, like C major. Now, only C major notes show up over here. Or we could change it to C minor. Let's put it back to C major. And notice over here that each note has a priority. They're all set to low. We could drag it up to high, which will make those notes chosen more often. And we could right click to delete the notes. Let's change these to medium. Let's delete these. And now we have high, medium, and low. So that's how often each note should be chosen. So this note was chosen the most. Let's go up here to edit and delete the pattern. And we could also choose to create chords. So if we choose a major chord, we could drop a major chord in like this. And again, it's going to randomize what notes are played. And we could choose any chord type we want. Let's delete this. And we could also adjust the groove or swing right over here. Let's switch the key to minor pentatonic and add in a bunch of notes. 
And now to copy this throughout the section, let's copy up to here. We can hold down Shift to select an area and go to Edit and choose Repeat to End of Pattern. And we can choose the amount of steps right here. And see the extra ones over here. Or shorten it to create odd patterns. Let's put it back to 16. We could adjust the steps per measure, the position variance, and the velocity variance. We could see the velocities over here, and we could also create a chain. So we can drag from one note to another. And if the first note is chosen, the one it's chained to will automatically be chosen next. And we could right click to delete those chains. And we could also shift the timing of the notes, along with adjusting the note lengths. And we could also change how many notes we see more or less. And over here, we have the output MIDI channel, which will be useful for using layers. We get four separate parts sending to four different sounds. But I'll show you that a bit later. We could also have eight different patterns. So we could choose pattern two and copy all the data from pattern one to pattern two. Then we could just change up pattern two to be a bit different. Let's delete this note. Now, if we switch this from mono to poly, it'll play multiple notes or chords at the same time. Let's keep it simple and leave it on mono. Let's select this first sixteenth note and let's have it repeat through the whole pattern. Then we'll delete a bunch of these sixteenth notes to create a more interesting pattern. Let's hear that. We could also switch the randomization from variable to stable to repeat the same pattern every time. While variable is continuously random. We could adjust the playback speed over here. And change the octaves over here. As I said earlier, there's four layers up here to choose from. So we can use this one plugin to control up to four tracks or instruments. Let's close this and let's make a new track for our sequencer. Let's move it to the top and let's name it. And let's move the Stokus sequencer to that track. Alt on the PC, option on the Mac, and just drag it. Now the sequencer is on this track, 
and the synth is on this track. So it won't trigger it anymore. This first layer is set to MIDI channel one. So we could drag the routing from this track to create a send. Let's delete the audio and only send MIDI channel one. So now this track will trigger this track. So we can use the different layers to trigger the other instruments. Let's create a send to the bass track, turn off the audio, and send MIDI channel two. Change this to MIDI channel two. And now this pattern will trigger the bass. Let's mute the first layer. Let's delete this and add some lower notes and create a pattern. Let's make it 32 steps and make the pattern a bit different on the second half. Let's unmute the synth. Let's do the same thing for a drum track. Turn off the audio, MIDI channel three. We'll go to the third layer and change that to MIDI channel three. Change it to poly and add in a kick part. Let's add a snare. Let's add some ghost notes with a lower velocity. We can just click them to cycle through. Let's add some hi-hats. And adjust their velocities to create some accents. Let's add some claps on top. And let's hear them one at a time. Let's mute these. And let's use layer four for a plucked synth. Do the same thing. No audio. MIDI channel four. Set this to MIDI channel four. In the key of C, minor pentatonic, add a bunch of notes, repeat them. Let's delete a bunch of them to create a pattern. And let's hear that. Let's play it back slower. And let's unmute them from here and mute them from here. So as you can see, it's a pretty powerful sequencer for creating MIDI parts in Reaper.
So that's pretty much it. That's the Stokus free VST sequencer plugin in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.